Hey everyone, my name is Peyton Barney, and in this tutorial what I want to do is go over setting up our actual displacement inside of UV5. Um, so if you notice with the scene here, uh, I actually have like these uh, pieces that are floating and all, and because this project used to be in Unreal Engine 4, um, I actually used tessellation all with it. Uh, however, right now, uh, UV5 does not actually have like a tessellation or uh, parallax that I've noticed at least. Um, the reason being because we're going more towards nanite with the higher uh, resolution like geometry. And also with this, they're kind of wanting to push at least uh, what it seems like into that same aspect with the material side of things. Uh, so I do want to kind of walk through real quick and give uh, an idea at least of some other ways you can tackle uh, actually getting displacement inside of Unreal Engine 5. Um, so you see here that I do have my ground, it has the flat material on it, and even if I go into the shader, uh, it used to have stuff set up for tessellation, but of course it doesn't have a spot anymore on the material itself. Uh, for tessellation and so we can't really yet do that um, and even if you scroll down here you'll notice there's not a tessellation panel anywhere so what we want to do first is I'm going to close out of that and we're going to go back here to our scene so I'm going to go to our plugins and in the plugins uh, there should be if you type model um, there is a model modeling tools I believe editor mode. So I'm going to click this on and then I'm going to say yes. Uh, it's just letting me know that it is in a, a beta version right now. So um, yeah, just exercising caution with it. But now what I need to do is actually restart my project. So I'm going to relaunch it real quick. And uh, as this opens up, uh, what we're going to have is a new tab actually um, that's going to allow us to model and all. So as this opens, uh, I can now close out of this. Cool. And we should have the modeling features. So if I go up here and underneath this panel here and switch our mode. So uh, you'll notice that I'm in uh, Unreal Engine 5 Preview. So it's a little bit different how the modes are uh, showing up right now um, in here. And yeah, just drop down here and I'm actually going to switch it over to modeling uh, and enable that. So now you'll see that I have this modeling toolbar here as well as these shapes and a bunch of different options over here as well. Um, and so what I'm going to do is we're going to use the example first of this little cutout of the ground. And I want to add some displacement basically using the height map, just like we would with the tessellation, into uh, our ground here. That way I get a little bit more you know, depth from it. It still has that same look that we had before, um, just without yeah, using the tessellation. So. Um, now that I'm going to do this, what I want to do is actually scroll down and you'll notice that there's uh, poly model, create, uh, transform, and so forth. And we should be able to find a option to, um, let's see, displace. So that's going to be underneath deform here. And I'm going to hit the displace option here. So you're going to see that immediately uh, this plane that we just uh, created has some deformation happening to it. Um, and we're not too sure necessarily like if it's, if it's working correctly or not right now. Um, you know, it's just doing displacement in general. But I want to make sure that it's actually connected up to my height map and all. Um, and you'll notice down here that it's actually going to give you an accept or cancel button. So none of this is final until we hit that accept button with it. Um, but what I want to do is now I'm actually going to switch instead of a Perlin noise, which is just doing a random Perlin noise, uh, and I'm going to switch to our texture 2D map. So I'm going to click that there. And now it's going to ask for a displacement map. And this is where we can actually plug in our uh, height map that we were using previously for tessellation. So I can find ground dirt height. 
and that is now plugged in. Uh, now one thing that you will need to keep in mind as well with this is if your material and this, uh, well if your material itself has any form of tiling, which ours does in here, uh, and it looks like I'm tiling um, by four, then that's not going to, uh, by default, align properly. So we'll probably see that it's a bit off. So what I can do is actually come down here and type in four to both of those. And now we should be getting our deformation um, appropriately to uh, the model itself and to our, our sh shader that we have on there. So you can see that there's a couple of other features, displacement intensity, subdivisions, so that's gonna be how dense it is. Um, and if I go to wireframe, you're gonna see that of course this piece and this piece um, are pretty different in uh, yeah, the, the density of it. So if I go back to this piece here and let's say um, bring that up, it's going to continue to make it higher poly, but also you know give more details and all to our material. So I'm going to just do a couple, uh, I can also switch from uh, PN triangles to flat, just like with our tessellation. And um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of other things in here that's pretty cool to look at. But I think this one should be the height as well. So you can see uh, as I push it up, uh, it's giving like the, uh, it has that blue kind of screen that's that's it being edited uh, and updating so uh, probably leave that at a 10 uh, overall it looks like it's giving some nice form it's not nothing too crazy but we are getting a lot more deformation there and so now I'm gonna go down here make sure all of that's working and let's say that we're good with that and that's what we want so now if I hit accept you will notice that uh, it might take a second or so, but I actually have this geometry um, now with the the displacement on it. So if I go to wireframe, you can see that. Um, it's nothing crazy, but it's enough at least in here. I could go much higher poly, of course, and get more details, um, but I think overall like that works pretty well. And then let's say that I push some of this over uh, to there, and yeah, I'm getting those nice silhouettes and the breakup on the edges and all. Um, and also, of course, lighting and stuff. Uh, it's just gonna help it out because it's not just a normal map now doing the information, it's all of it. Um, and now, one other thing you'll notice is that this piece here, um, I'm actually using throughout the scene as all of these. And we would see a scene here, however, when I hit accept, it actually updates the ground geo mesh that I had. So if I click into the static mesh, you'll see that it now has the displacement inside of that. Um, so I think this is kind of like how they're thinking, you know, actually placing the displacement into the mesh. Um, definitely there are pros and cons to uh, like going about this way. I think it could be useful to getting some really nice like looking deformation and all, um, but also there could be some problems with you know, trying to get stuff to blend properly and uh, so forth, especially with like a ground as well. Um, but at least like with stuff like this, the situation where I'm trying to get mud uh, throughout this uh, little like street and everything, and I'm wanting my displacement that I originally had with tessellation inside of Unreal Engine 4. Um, this is an awesome way to be able to tackle that uh, without too much of a cost, being that this is only, uh, I think, yeah, 5,400 triangles um, and get a yeah, pretty solid result. So uh, that's about it for this video and I will see you next time.